Hi guys, so we're gonna talk to you today about crisis communication and we have our hashtag as well right here, hashtag CC workshop, workshop wisdom. Uh, so go ahead and use that today as well. So our goal by the end of this presentation is that not only will you have a good understanding of crisis communication, but that you'll be able to implement it in your business or company. So to introduce us all, there we go. So here's all of us. So we've got Julia and Karina and Heather, Amanda, and me, Morgan. So first off, what is crisis communications? So this is the effort taken by a company to communicate with the public when an unexpected event occurs that could have a negative impact on the company's reputation. So this can consist of a lot of things, but the important thing is what it is, is communication between you and your business and your company, whether it's big or small, on how to deal with a negative impact that could come at your company through uh, news media or even social media. So why is this important? This allows you to be ready no matter what happens. So whether your business is big or small, again, like I said, just having this communication allows you and your team to not be frazzled if something negative does impact you. It also allows you to qu quickly contain the crisis. So this allows you to not only, again, be ready, but to do it quickly. Not only so that way you don't give a response that's frazzled or just an impulse or you're just reacting instead of thinking about it first. Another reason it's important is it allows you to react immediately, not only quickly, but with focus and with empathy. So you don't want to just give an apology or give a statement that is quick, but, not, but you want to be able to make sure that you are being considerate of the situation because it is something that's negatively happening. And then also, it's just good manners. Because how many times like something goes wrong with us, our friends, or family, and no one apologizes? You kind of, it rubs you the wrong way. And so you want to be able to do this as a company. It's good manners to make sure that not only you admit to the negative uh, event that happens to your company, but that you also do it well. And so these are some examples of a crisis that could happen. And it can range from all over the place, whether you specific, your company or business specifically deals with technology or food, it can range from all over. Because weather can affect your businesses and this allows you to give out a post saying, hey, we are not working today because of this. Or whether your business is big or small, or small like a family, or big like a bunch of people, there's still incidences that can happen that you won't see coming. But through crisis communication, you can have that discussion and be prepared for it no matter what the crisis is. And so with all the different versions of crises, Amanda is going to talk about an example of a crisis communication. All right. Thank you, Morgan. Um, so like Morgan said, I'm Amanda, and I'll be talking to you guys about a crisis communication that went well. So I know you guys have seen in the news, in, on social media, or on the internet, um, a company that has a crisis communication that didn't go exactly the right way. There could be scandals with celebrities, um, many different reasons that it just does not, it's not portrayed in a good light. So I will be giving you an example of a crisis communication that went well. This organization um, turned around and made this crisis um, better than what it could have been. And so I'm sure you guys have all heard of American Red Cross. So I'm going to be talking about a situation that happened with them. So the Red Cross crisis. So the Red Cross social media specialist, Gloria Hung, sent a tweet out on the organization's Twitter feed in 2011. Now, from a PR perspective, a lot of people have different social media accounts. You may have your personal hooked up with your organization or your businesses. So it's easy to mix up the two and maybe accidentally tweet something off of the organizations when you meant to be off of your personal. So exactly what I said, she meant to tweet it from her personal account. And the Red Cross received many calls in the middle night about this. So when things are posted on Twitter or Instagram, Facebook, any of the social media platforms, you know, it, it goes viral, it goes quickly, people see it. So the Red Cross received many calls about this when the tweet was sent. The tweet stayed up for an hour before it was taken down. And the tweet was, Ryan found two more four bottle packs of dogfish heads meetas touch beer. When we drink, we do it right. Hashtag getting slizzard. So 
Obviously, she did not mean for this to be tweeted out by American Red Cross. Yes, it's, it's humorous, it's funny. Um, oh, go back. And she didn't, it wasn't the end of the world, but obviously she did not want this to come from the Red Cross. So Red Cross averted a PR crisis. Karina will touch on it in a little bit. But basically, this wasn't the end of the world. They turned it around and made it not the biggest crisis um, communication that could have happened. Dogfish had used this as an opportunity to sell themselves and promote Red Cross too. So usually, um, or not usually, but sometimes, you know, the other company could be like, oh wow, like Red Cross did that, like I wonder how they're gonna do it. Dog head, Dogfish had actually helped them out and made the crisis not as big as it could have been. And this is a, a quote from the Red Cross. We are an organization that deals with life-changing disasters, and this wasn't one of them. So obviously, Red Cross deals with you know natural disasters, big things that happen in the world and all over the nation. And this, yes, was a mistake, but it wasn't the biggest problem that they've ever had. So they acknowledge that that wasn't the biggest disaster that they have had. And keep calm and call PR. Okay. So how the Red Cross managed to defuse the crisis was by quickly admitting and quickly jumping in to fix the situation. This is a tweet that they released right after the other one. It says, we've deleted the rogue tweet, but rest assured the Red Cross is sober and we've confiscated the keys. <laughs> so what this did was, um, what was interesting about the tweet was that they added humor as well as they helped lighten the situation and made it their best tactic. They also sincerely apologized both the employee and the organization. The employee released a tweet on her personal account and says, rogue tweet from Red Cross due to my inability to use Hootsuite. I wasn't actually hashtag getting slizzard, but just excited. Hashtag now embarrassing. And the organization blogged about it on their, on their blog. So what this did was show transparency as well as continue the good humor. So now I'm going to be talking about how they turn this crisis into a fundraiser. So Dogfish Head Craft Brewery posted on their social to encourage the audience to donate money and blood to the Red Cross. This crisis got so much media attention that they turned it around and made it a positive experience. So like I said before, they could have you know, not even acknowledged what the Red Cross did, but instead they're like, hey, I'll help out the Red Cross and maybe we'll put, on, put out on our social media to donate to the Red Cross because of this situation. So in this picture it says, please join Dogfish Head Craft Brewery in raising money for the American Red Cross. If you're interested in donating a pint, please click here to learn more about the Red Cross blood drives. And they say, no, alcohol can often make you more dehydrated. Dogfish Head recommends not drinking immediately before or after donating. And then this is also a screenshot from their Twitter. Um, so they were amused by the incident, like anyone would when they saw that tweet. And so they took to their Twitter account and they unleashed a stream of remarks and retweets using that hashtag get in Slizzard. So they actually continued the hashtag onto their personal account to acknowledge, yes, it was a mistake, but it actually was a good plan in the end because they got many, um, they got a lot of feedback off of it. So like he said, good plan, retweet. After I drop off a pint of blood to the Red Cross, I'm replacing it with a pint of dogfish beer, hashtag get in Slizzard. So they use the hashtag to an advantage. All right, and now I will pass it along. So one of the many reasons why the Red Cross was able to handle the situation so well was because they always kept a human tone from start to finish. They, they engaged with their followers, as well as they reminded the public that the organization was made up of humans and humans make mistakes. They also showed gratitude for the public's kindness to the situation. And lastly, they managed to flip what could have been a PR disaster into a successful fundraiser. So here are some of the reactions. This one is from Dogfish Beer, which is basically sending a call to action to their followers to donate to the Red Cross using the hashtag getting slizzard. This next one is from Hootsuite, um, which says that they're donating $100 to the Red Cross as well as beverage cozies to Gloria and the, dog, the Dogfish Beer Company. And this next one says, awesome, we'll put it to work. We've donated $20 because the Red Cross handled that situation so well. And this last one says that they donated $50 in honor of dogfish beer. All 
Okay, now I'm ready. Okay, so my name is Julia, and now I will be talking to you about how you can thrive in a crisis. So in, throughout my presentation, I will address what you can do before, after, and some of the programs and policies that your organization or business should have in place. So what can you do before a crisis? One of the first things that you can do is monitor your business or organization. And the ways that you can do that is by just simply walking around, talking to people, you know, monitoring social media, and then if you do so, you can find potential crises before they even happen and take some action. Because a lot of the time, these situations could have been prevented or could have been looked into so that it wouldn't have become a bigger issue. Then the next thing that you want to do is create a crisis team. This is really important because it allows you to take control of the situation quickly with just a small amount of people. And once you have a crisis team, you want to go ahead and assign roles and responsibilities so that people know what they are going to be held accountable for during the crisis. Then the next thing that you want to do is develop some plans and procedures. So this will be anything from like who you want to contact or um, contact lists like for the associates to know each other's numbers, it can be anything like that. And then the last thing is that you want to set up a practice drill. This is really important because you know there may be a lot of questions or things that your crises plan and team have together that may not work the day of a crisis. So you want to make sure that they actually practice before a situation happens. The next thing is what you can do during a crisis. So the first thing that we want to talk about is just have one spokesperson. This is really important because you want to be able to maintain all the information to just one person so that things do not get hectic or out of control or anything is said that was other differently. And then the next thing that you want to do is do not let your emotions get in the way. This is really important because at the end of the day, unless it really involves you, it doesn't just affect you. It affects the organization, the business, the other associates involved. So you just want to make sure that you always think before you act. The next thing is know your facts. Make sure that your crisis team gets everything together before they ever give any type of update or report on what is occurring and you want to respond within the golden hour. The golden hour means that as soon as the situation has broken out or is out on the table, you want to make sure that you gather the basic details of what is happening. And then throughout the situation, you can update your audience frequently about what is going on. The next thing is involve your employees and partners. This is really important because if you have an associate, and their friends and family decide to ask some questions about, hey, you know, what's going on? Like, I heard this about your company or organization. Then you want them to have answers because if they kind of just say, you know what, I don't know, or they're not really telling us much, then it just sounds kind of sketchy. So make sure that you take control and involve everyone that needs to be. And then the last thing is do not stop until the crisis has been resolved. Okay, now I want to talk about some programs and policies that your company or organization should have in place. So the first thing is develop consistent hiring methods. This is really important because when you are interviewing people, there may be some issues or concerns or questions that you may have. And if you address those things during the interview, then you might be able to you know, avoid certain situations or certain maybe people that you have in your organization. The next thing is have an associate handbook. This is really important because it allows you to, to state the policies and programs and rules that you have within your organization. And it allows you to make it clear about what is important to your company and the consequences that there are if anybody breaks them. The next thing is creating e-modules. Creating e-modules allows you to provide clear clarification of a certain policy, whether it's like an HR related issue or a financial issue or a new program that's coming out. It allows you to just give the basic details and information about that one program or one policy. Then the next thing is have some sort of like anonymous hotline or another um, person like supervisor people can go talk to that's not directly within the organization because a lot of the time people have things to say but they're kind of maybe scared to go say them to their direct supervisor and so this will just allow you to make sure that they feel comfortable reaching out if they hear something, if the associate hears something or they just want to address a certain situation. So that was all that I have about thriving in a crisis and then now I will be passing it on to Heather. Thank you, Julia. 
So the last step in dealing with a crisis is to move on. And to do that, you must first carefully craft your response. And in order to create a very successful message, there are certain elements that you should include, one of them being your apology, because people really like it when companies own up to their mistakes. And by simply taking responsibility of the situation, you can start rebuilding your respect and credibility. And you could also include what steps you are taking to fix the problem. Because if you just say, we're sorry, and that's it, people will think, OK, well, now what? People want to be kept in the loop so they know how it is going to end. And speaking of the end, you could also include what the future looks like for your company. Let them know that you are going to bounce back from the crisis and also promise that it will never happen again. And although the Red Cross didn't necessarily follow all of those elements, they were still very successful because they were able to evaluate their own personal situation. And they realized that you know their crisis wasn't as bad as it could have been, which is definitely true. So they basically said it was an honest mistake, and people respected them for that. So after you create your message, the next thing you want to do is to identify and address those who have been affected. Because if your message doesn't get to the right people, then you might as well just be talking to a brick wall. And really, it would be a shame if you put so much thought and effort into your message just for it to not be heard. But after you get your message out to the right people, you can then monitor the situation. And one way to do this is to just set down the phone or step away from the keyboard and simply watch how people are reacting to the message. What are they saying about it? And by doing that, you can gauge how successful or not your message really is and whether or not you need to adapt the situation. And I honestly recommend only stepping in when you absolutely have to, because really, no matter what, there will always be a few people who will take your message negatively. And the best thing you can do is to give the best answer that you can. And so after you have monitored the situation, uh, you can then review and learn from the situation. And like Julia said, the best way to do this is to create a crisis team. And this group of people will identify signs of a crisis and prevent it from even happening. And they will usually do this by re looking back at a crisis that has happened and think about what has happened, how it happened, and what could have been done differently. For example, one thing that the Red Cross could have done differently is to perhaps maybe have the social media manager be the only one in charge of the Twitter account and the employees simply send, them, send her the content. That way she could review it and post it herself and that way nothing bad could get through. But that really is just one example in a sea of different possibilities. And now you know how to handle a public relations crisis like a professional. Thank you for listening.